Hey guys, thanks for joining me. My name is Matt Diederich and I'd like to welcome you again to another astrophotography tutorial. And for those of you that are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe and you'll be up to date on new astrophotography related videos. In this video guys, we have an awesome set of five tips to photograph the upcoming Geminid meteor shower. The Geminid meteor shower is an event where the Earth is passing through debris left by an asteroid that passed through the solar system. So unlike most meteor showers that happen from the Earth passing through a debris field left from a comet, the Geminids are rare because the Earth is passing through debris left from an asteroid. So I thought that that's pretty cool. Did you know that those meteors that are passing through the Earth's upper atmosphere and burning up for us to see are moving at upwards of 80,000 miles an hour. That is insane, the Geminid meteor shower, which is going to peak on the morning of December 14th. Now, the meteor shower is not just going to occur that night. You can see meteors from the Geminid meteor shower anytime from December 4th all the way up through December 17th as a rough estimate. So don't only go out that night on the 14th, go outside if you have clear skies because you might get a chance to view a pretty bright meteor or even fainter ones from the Geminids. You might be wondering, where do I need to face in the night sky to see the Geminid meteors? Now that is a great question. So if you know where the constellation Orion is, the Gemini is to the left of it and will be rising in the east. So if you face east and if you look towards the left of Orion, that is where those meteors are going to appear to radiate from in when they happen in the night sky. Today I'd like to tell you guys five tips on how to photograph the Geminid meteor shower. Tip number one is you want to have a digital camera with a relatively wide angle lens. I like shooting meteor showers with either a 24 millimeter lens or in this scenario another 14 millimeter lens to keep as wide a field of view as possible. Now I want to use a shutter cable release. This intervalometer is going to allow me to shoot short exposures continuously and that's going to record any meteors that might happen in the night sky. Camera setting wise with a setup, I usually like running at an ISO of around 6400 with 8 second photos and I repetitively shoot those photos continuously to record any bright meteors. Now with a lens, fast lenses are ideal, either f1.4 or f2.8. So there are your basic camera settings, you can adjust from there depending on your light pollution and how dark the night skies are. Tip number two guys. If you can, make sure that you're utilizing as sturdy of a tripod as possible. Because when you're shooting long exposures of the night sky, if you have a tripod that isn't sturdy, those exposures can be ruined by camera shaking or the camera moving. Tip number three, guys. Be smart, check the weather. If it's cold, make sure you dress for the weather. This is key because here in Pennsylvania, it's getting into the low 30s at night, sometimes even to the 20s. So we wanna make sure that we dress for the weather and we wanna enjoy the meteor shower by keeping warm. Tip number four, if you can, travel to darker night skies. Darker skies are gonna allow you to see more faint Geminid meteors and we have the great benefit that the new moon phase is occurring on the peak of the Geminid meteors. So you will be able to see even more dim meteors and dark night skies really add to the experience of seeing as many meteors as possible. Last but not least guys, tip number five is you want to view the area relatively where the meteors are going to appear to radiate from, which is the constellation Gemini. So that is towards the east and it will be on the left hand side of Orion. So if you can locate Orion, look towards the left of it and of course throughout the night the earth is going to turn and that constellation is going to rotate higher and higher into the night sky. So you don't always have to face directly there but if you have a nice comfortable chair you can get looking at an all sky view and just lay back and watch the meteor shower. So I hope these five tips help you guys photograph and experience the Geminid meteor shower. So to recap, using a DSLR or mirrorless camera with a wide angle 14 or 24 millimeter lens, I'm gonna set up my intervalometer to shoot about eight second photos at ISO 6400 with the lens at f1.4 or f2.8 with my slower lens. I'm gonna use a nice sturdy tripod 
I'm gonna bundle up for the weather, and I'm gonna try to get to darker night skies. Last but not least, I'm gonna face one camera relatively towards the east, facing Gemini, and I'll put another camera angled towards a different portion of the night sky just to try to photograph a different area where maybe we can capture brighter Geminid meteors. I hope you guys enjoy the meteor shower, and as always, reach out if you have questions. I'm here to help, and I hope you have clear skies and enjoy the meteor shower. Thanks, guys. We'll see you.